So yes, I read the first book in the Mistborn trilogy. I have thought. Roll the intro. Hello everyone, my name is Monica and welcome back to my channel, Emily Reads, where I talk about books and things. And today, we're starting a new segment called Monica's Judgment. Basically, this is a segment where I judge books that you like and sometimes I don't like them and sometimes I do. So how did I feel about Miss Bourne, the first book, The Final Empire? Well, first of all, I have to talk about <laughs> the plot of this book. The plot of this book is a stereotypical, I would say, plot for most books. It's there's a big bad, we gotta take down the big bad. We're a band of merry men because it's all men except one girl because God forbid we have two girls in one band. But anyway, so there's this band of people, they're all really compelling characters, I really enjoyed the characters and they're led by this man named Kelsier. Now Kelsier is a Mistborn. Mistborn means that they basically can control more, like, like a lot of elements, but we'll get to that in a second. We'll get to the Magneto-ness of it all in a moment. But basically, um, they're a band, they're trying to pull off this crazy heist and basically overthrow the government. That's the premise of this book and I, would, I don't think that's a bad premise I think that's a good premise I should be holding this up the whole time but it's just a lot so it's not a bad premise it's a good premise but the book does drag on and also I didn't like the fact that there was only one female member of the group now however that female member of the group is not one of those not like other girl girls she actually is a just a woman you know like that's something that I really enjoy about Brandon Sanderson's writing is that he has this ability of cra crazy ability of writing women as people and not just like in comparison to other girls one of the things that um, led me to to think this is well she does have the typical tomboy like aesthetic she has really short hair she doesn't wear dresses and stuff like that but there is a reason for that and she never talks shit about women that do do that like i think that that's the the main thing that really got to me about this book when it came to the main character whose name is not the main character well there are two main characters it's kelsier and vin um when Vin never talks shit about people for the way they dress, for the way they talk, for the way they are. She does think that they're a little bit like, you know, the, the stereotype of rich versus poor, but it's not the stereotype of women versus women. So I thought that was really good. I think that was well done. Um, now let's get to <laughs> the magic system. Um, I was really scared to read this book because basically I don't read fantasy and this is like the epitome of fantasy and I really wanted to read it because I thought, you know what, this is like the booktube it, this is the booktube darling, this is the booktube be all end all of bookdom. So I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna... Here's the thing. <laughs> From the moment they introduced the idea of Mistborns, I was like, oh, so they're basically mutants and they're all Magneto. If you want to read this book as a sci-fi reader, I totally recommend that you go into it with that mentality because honestly, I felt this book was more of a sci-fi than a fantasy just because in my head I associated like allomancy, which is what they call it, to um basically magnetism which is what they do of course not exactly it's kind of like magnetism in the sense that magneto can use um any metal to bend it to his will but in this case they burn metals and metals just let them do different things including flying around and doing shit magneto does that's why i, I, I kept saying like <laughs> in this review i'm just gonna say this was all a bunch of magnetos and another thing was that the the setting itself i don't know if it was because i was really into the idea of this being magnetism instead of allomancy or whatever but the setting itself reminded me a lot of Treasure Planet. Like, I kept seeing everything through the eyes of, like, <laughs> like imagine somebody was projecting Treasure Planet, um, like, the, the backgrounds and things like that onto this book. And that's how I kept seeing it. So I think that that's one of the reasons why I kept on reading. It was because 
I was lost in my own little sci-fi bubble and I was basically making the epitome of, sci of, of, of fantasy reading into a sci-fi. The story is good. The, the characters are good. The story does drag on and like a lot of fantasy or any epic because a lot of space opera has this too. Dune has this problem too. Well, not problem. It's a problem because it's me judging the book, but it's basically it has too many characters. It has too many characters and then sometimes characters die and I'm like, oh, the, that person wow I forgot they existed what did they do so it it kind of gets you lost there there are other like there are normal people there are mistlings which are people that can control only one or two metals and then there's mistborns that can control a lot of metals then and there is a there's a lot like there's a lot well I mean it's a big chunker of a book there's a lot packed into it so I guess sometimes I got lost in it but I think you can do what I did which is just ignore those parts and when I mean ignore it's not like just don't read them but like I would read them but I wouldn't dwell on them and then I would just continue on reading you know like there's this whole like animals that live in the mist that they consume the bones of other animals and they're like kind of these misshapen things i don't remember what they're called neither do i care because honestly their part in the book was so small it was important but it was small and it just doesn't it didn't it didn't make me like want to stop reading because I didn't get it. Like it was that wasn't the point. And I think that that's to Brandon Sanders's real credit because if you can get someone like me to like a book like this, then I think you're a pretty good writer. Now, here's the thing. I think Brandon Sanders is a good writer. I don't think he's an amazing writer. Like I just think he's a good writer. There's nothing about him that really truly like captures me I mean yes he does this whole thing where he basically like does a lot of build up build up build up build up build up and then the last couple of chapters you get this like boom explosion of like oh my god everything makes sense well kind of you know um, at least he do he does that with with the series of his that I like, which is Skyward, because of course, where at the end you're like, oh, big cliffhanger, oh, big thing happens, and I know people told me that this book seems like it would be a standalone, and that's because I think that by the time that he wrote this book, he wasn't he didn't have the contract to write the other two books, so yeah. Basically, this could be a standalone. By the end of it, you're like, okay, everything, you know, what had to happen, happened, and everything is resolved. Or is it? It does leave you kind of on a cliffhanger, and I like that. But I just don't think Brandon Sanderson is that great of a writer as people make him up to be. I think he's a great writer of fantasy. I think he's a wonderful writer, but I just don't see... I, I, I am not on the Brandon Sanders sort of love train as many people are. However, this book was good. Do I recommend that you read it? Sure, go for it. I mean, I think this is one of the better books I've read this year, which, I mean, isn't saying much because I haven't read. No, it's not. It's actually one of the worst books I've read this year, but it isn't saying much because I've read very few very good books this year. I don't think I have much else to say. The characters are good, the story is good, the love story in it is adorable. I mean, it's it's adorable because it's kind of silly and, you know, it just... It's okay. I gave it four stars because Kelsier is king, but um, I, I if 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 Kelsier had been any less of a badass or any less of a good mentor character, this book would have gotten three stars. It just doesn't have that it factor for me that it has for a lot of people. And that's okay because we all have different reading tastes. Again, I'm not saying the book is bad. What I'm saying is definitely not the book for me. However, I did enjoy it. Does that make any sense? Does that make any sense at all? Why did I call this Monica's judgment? Oh, this is crazy. Also, by the way, I got my hair like cut because the, the front pieces were longer and I look like a mix between Adele from Behind Her Eyes and also Javier Bardem in No Country for Old Man. So there's that. 
Um, do I recommend you read this book? Sure. If you like fantasy, are you gonna love it? Probably. You're probably you probably have already read this book and you're here wishing that I was like shitting on it. But the reality and the truth of it is it's that I'm not gonna shit on it because it's not a bad book. Is it a typical like story where there's so much going on and it's high stakes and it's like you know like I want to say stereotypical fantasy, but then I get told like, well, like some sci-fi is like that too. So, you know, like there's too many characters. There's a bunch of shit going on. You know, it reminded me a lot of Aragorn in that whole like, we must beat the Dark Lord thing. And I know that that's like basically the only fantasy book I've ever read. But I feel like it was like if you took all of the Aragorn series, which... I have thoughts about that, but just put it all into one book and I think that that's not bad because I think the Aragorn series drags on and yet this somehow drags on too. Like we get whole scenes of this girl being bored at balls. So um, yeah, I give it four stars. Definitely pick it up if you want to, if you like longer books. I'm going to continue on with the series simply because I want to. Simply because I want to say I fucking read the Mistborn series. I've also read that he's kind of doing this thing where it's going to end up being a sci-fi. And I totally get why this would end up being a sci-fi because Allomancy is so sci-fi-ish. I think that that's, that's just so cool how like he manages to get that sci-fi aspect into a fantasy novel to the point of me really liking it. Or at least sort of liking it. Also, don't get caught up in like, what metals do what? What metals do this? Some people get caught up in that. I didn't. I was just like, yeah, I'm going to accept that some metals do something. I'm not going to dwell on it. Don't dwell on that shit. I think that anybody that doesn't like this book um, dwells on the incorrect things. Well, or they just really don't like the book. But if you are reading it, my recommendation is don't dwell on it too much. Just go on it with an open mind. Open. Just go into it with an open mind and you'll be fine. And honestly, it's a pretty good book. <laughs> this is such shit for my channel. Usually I'm like, this book sucks, you know? <laughs> but this book doesn't suck. This book was really good. So yeah, that is The Final Empire by Brandon Sanderson. I hope you enjoyed this review. And, um... <laughs> I don't know how to finish this, like what do I say? I, I don't have anything funny to say because it wasn't that bad. Except like, I just want to say there's a character called Ellen. He must be protected. He is an adorable cinnamon bun and he is so, so nice. And it's, you know, it's nice to see a love interest that isn't here to save you, but is actually here to kind of be like, you know, like, silly and 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 like you're adorable like we <laughs> you should be saved so yeah i think it was a really like i said i don't have anything negative to say about this book because it was actually pretty damn good so with that being said um thank you so much for watching please leave a black heart below if you got this far or even if you just don't have anything else to add but you want to say hello, just leave a black heart down below. Or a red heart or whatever you know you want. I'm gonna go now and I'm gonna leave you with a friendly reminder that I post every Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And that I will see you in another galaxy far, far away. Thank you so much for watching. Bye bye They're all Magnetos. They're all basically Magnetos. I don't, like, <laughs> they're Magnetos. <laughs>